uh, how do you, how do you comfort someone who's lost their parents um, from the from the perspective of yoga philosophy? Yes. <clears throat> overall explanation of death is separation of consciousness from the body is death. Everything remains intact at the time of death. Only body departs. Mind and all the memories continue. That means death is like changing the clothes, changing the clothes. So we change one body to another body. Body is like clothing. When we die, body dies, but energy remains and all the memories remain, all the desires remain. So there is no body but desires. This is called sanskaras. So sanskaras compels one to take on the body to fulfill the desire. So kind of body we take that suits, that fulfills our desire. That means there is continuation of life. All our mental faculties continue we fulfill whatever we can in this life and the next life continues fulfilling the desire, but it is a new body in fresh environment. So old garments are thrown away and you put on new garments. Then we, we take on new body with freshness we continue. So everything we learn in the previous life continues. So death, actually from spiritual perspective, is nothing to grieve about. It is like going to sleep and waking up. So we go to sleep at night, wake up in the morning. Again, we go to sleep and wake up in the morning. So we don't regret that somebody fell asleep and woke up, fell asleep and woke up. It is continuation. So sleep is like a rest period, same way death is like a longer sleep. Everything continues. And then all the relationship continue. That means everything continues, but we have no memory who was our relative, friend or enemy in the past life. So this way we start with freshness fresh life, we continue. And it's a blessing in disguise because if we remember our past life, it will be disastrous. So this is why if we just, we remember anything of the past, it comes in the way. And if somebody tells you the future, like what is going to happen in your life, life will be dull. Like you go to see a movie and somebody tells you the story, all the excitement goes away. Same way, the creation of God is such that everything is created fresh. We don't remember anything, but we remember the essence of it. So for example, we learned certain lesson, spiritual lesson that survives. <laughs> <clears throat> anything that we learned in the last life continues, but we don't remember particular person. So we learn the lesson from spiritual perspective. So we should not grieve on anyone who dies because of attachment we grieve. And that is not natural for human being but from long perspective, we have to let go of them. People grieve for person who died, but really if you think about 
one dies for uh, one uh, worries or grieves for dead wife, dead husband, dead child, dead parents. What we are not really worried about them. We are only worried about ourselves because we want to hang on to them for our joy. So all human relationships are conditional. The simplest example, somebody who is a close relative that you love very much is in coma and cannot function. Doctor said nothing can be done. The person is in coma, though is going through all the suffering, doesn't know about it. But many of the family members say, doctor, give medicine so he lives longer. So this is the case we see that people are concerned about loved one, so they live longer because their attachment. They don't look at the person who is dying and who is suffering. So all our relationship are conditional. So this is higher aspect of philosophy. But even from other aspect, we have to learn without attachment. We have to live like this is the last day to live. And live with relatives as if this is our last day of contact. So we don't get attached. So we get used to enjoy everything in the moment instead of being attached. But most of our relationship is instead of loving and living in the present, attachment. And we do so many things. So we show our attachment. We expect the reward also. So another way of looking at is that Atman is permanent. Atman, which is pure, when Atman is contaminated with body, senses, or mind, it becomes Jivatma or soul. Soul means entanglement of consciousness with body. Body, senses, and mind. This is what becomes soul or soul or jivatma suffers. But Atman is always free because Atman realizes it is free. But when Atman gets contaminated, it identifies with body, senses, mind, relatives, possessions. And because of that, they consider that real. For example, in a dream, you meet your friends and relatives and somebody dies in the dream. You grieve, you become very sad, but when you wake up, it was illusion. This was only temporary. Same way, we take this life as if it is temporary. There is permanent life at all the time, at the same time, relative life. So we have to understand relative, relative life as is. The last book, Eternal Reality and Relative Reality, talks about it. Eternal Reality, Supreme Reality, where nothing happens. Nothing is born, nothing dies. There is no two, everything is one. Though they look different. But in this reality, relative reality, everything looks different. Like my body, your body, male, female, sister, brother, relative, friend, stranger, enemy. All this relationship comes because of identity of consciousness with the body, with the senses, with the mind, and with the emotions. So meditation part is we go inward and realize that we are consciousness, we are Atman, we are never born, 
we never die, nothing touches us. Same way, in other persons, we don't look at their body, male or female, young or old, rich or poor, friend or foe, we look at consciousness within them. That means there is same consciousness in all the living creatures. Not only all the human beings, but even all the living creatures, insects, wild animals, everyone has same spark of consciousness. But because of Dvaita or duality, we feel separateness. So meditation technique is to remove all the separation and feel oneness. So we can contact somebody who is passed away. They really gone from this life, but eternally they are there. So they say that anyone who existed ever still exists in the space. Christ, Buddha, Krishna, Rama, anyone who ever lived still exists. This is why we can meditate and get in touch with Supreme Godhead. So really nothing is destroyed. That means it's just like from a clay. You make many toys, right? And then you break. All the toys are gone, but clay remains intact. Behind all the gold ornaments, gold is the essence. Behind all the parts of the mud, mud is constant. Behind all the names and forms, consciousness is constant. So we dwell on that philosophy and meditate on that, then we learn to be free from attachments so we can enjoy this life fully at the same time we enjoy the ultimate freedom because ultimate freedom is that even that his body goes through the old age suffering diseases consciousness is not touched by it that awareness remains but this we have to cultivate we cultivate that feeling then we become freer so people are not free because they build more attachment, not only their attachment to their body, senses and mind and emotion, but to the things, to the people, the ideology, and they want to hang on to it. And we see so many people, I see all the time, because I have that kind of vision, that one of our friends, spiritual friend, passed away. He was 84. But just his life, he had property in India. He was thinking of going there, doing this. He was talking about renouncing. He has a motel. Just, it, he got out of everything. They say, you really did it. But I said, you have to do it, not just to think. I have seen so many spiritual people they talk about this is illusion and they're caught into their own family, caught into their own ashrams, caught onto their disciples, their fame and their power. So real freedom comes by renunciation. Renunciation means letting go. The concept is letting go, I'm nothing. That is surrender. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. I surrender to the Supreme Lord. You become nothing. Who would you fear? You're nothing. You don't, don't have size or shape. You don't have time or space. You're nothing. You're free. If you're nothing, then you are in the world you become homogeneous with everyone. That means everything is you. Everything is yours. In, instead of saying, this is my house, you go in the park. Park is yours. Sky is yours. 
ocean is yours, everything is yours. And then a pure nothing, where would you go? Right? If a cube of sugar is put in the milk, it dissolves. Where is the cube of sugar? Nowhere, right? It is gone, but not really not gone because cube of sugar leaves its sweetness throughout the entire cup of milk. Same way, we become homogeneous. We are everywhere. So this is called liberation. See, they call, talk about liberation. Liberation, people have wrong idea that I become psychic and I get the power. I know the past and future and I can do this. I can control the weather, I can control. Really, it is being nothing. Buddha calls it nirvana or extinction. And yogis call it Brahman or supreme consciousness. In short, removing duality. Dvaita, I and you. To whatever extent we let go of I and you, to that extent you can be free instantaneously. To whatever extent you increase I and me inside and outside, you get the problem. The problem could be at the family level, husband and me, children and me, but it can be my town and other town, my religion, your religion, my country and your country, my properties, your properties. You can see so many people, even in today's life, they're lost. They're lost in immorality. And they're immoral. At the same time, they mesmerize people who follow immorality. This is the sign of Kali Yuga. That means people are ignorant. They're following an immoral path. And all the followers imitate and support the immoral path. If you see something immoral happening and you do nothing, you are participating in that crime, in that immorality. So really, what is happening today at such a grand scale? Our president is lying every minute, tweeting wrong thing without proof. And still people don't listen because they are mesmerized, mesmerized by, mesmerized by constant bombardment. This is why how to be free from mesmerizing? Be introverted. Get established within and don't allow your senses to react. Don't let your emotions to react. Don't get into the past or future and you will become free. Okay. What you said about Buddha and Jesus and all the masters, they're still around in space. What does that yes. mean? This is all the research show. Science says that, and all the great masters say that nothing is ever destroyed. Everything acts, it's just look at the vibe, phone messages, email messages, you don't open it, still remains in space. Doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. So okay. that gets space is infinite potential. Brahman is that is ever expanding. They say universe is constantly expanding. That means is limitless. Our existence on the earth is such a speck of dirt. If you look at the our uh, solar system, look at our galaxy and then other galaxies and stars, like we become insignificant. Of course, yeah. Yes, so this is why. Other thing, uh, just scientifically or indirectly, that if you are thinking 
meditating, all the inspiration comes to you, right? Mm -hmm. Where does it come from? From higher source. Mm. Same way, some of the criminals, they invent ways for criminal activity. So they are meditating on it. They are connecting with all the past energy or past souls. Of criminals? Huh? Of the criminals? The criminal souls? Yes. Oh, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> that means we are attract, we attract what we are ready for. So like entire universe is law of attraction. Like even in this life is law of attraction. I just wrote last six books or so after that zero is infinity. I don't plan to write. I just think inspiration came to me and I just kept writing because it felt good. Nobody read, it doesn't matter. It just came and it feel, made me feel good and relieved. It felt so good, it was my meditation, okay? And I consider that came from some higher sources I don't know direct connection, but when I was working on that, I was already involved in it. So I wake up in the middle of the night with some inspiration. So this is what I see, is that connection. This is what satsang is. Satsang is sat sang. Sat means goodness or virtue or God. Sang means association. Association that awakens goodness within you. This is called satsang. So this is why I don't have any student, right? But I'm teaching some people. And it is my satsang because my teaching, my writing gives me satsang. Because the kind of satsang I want with people who are practicing something, I can ask them question, I can share with them. I haven't found any. Even that Monday night class, we have two more Mondays and then it's over because I sent invitation. I'm sorry I didn't come. I, I was the night before my husband, my father's in laws. Right. Uh, that, that doesn't matter. Overall, statistically, out, out of all the invitation, three persons showed up. So I'm I should not waste time. So I, I would say that anyone who wants, they can do private session. They can always tell me, I cannot afford it. I want for free. I want to pay only this much, whatever they want. But people, even I tell them, call me anytime. I can do Zoom, but they don't want to bother me. They say, I don't want to bother you. I say, it is your ego. If it is very important that you want to learn, let go of your ego and admit I need help. Please teach me. Nobody would stop you, see? But this is, ego comes in subtle ways. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. You know, every single time, every day, every Wednesday when we have our meeting scheduled, yes, something inside of me wants to cancel. <laughs> yes. And I don't, it's my ego or something. Like I'm like, and I just like ignore it. I'm like, no, I'm committing to this. I'm doing it on Wednesdays. Shut up. <laughs> yes. See, the value of commitment. See, in yoga philosophy, they say abhyasa and vairagya. Patience and perseverance are necessary. So for learning spiritual wisdom, one has to sacrifice something like in old times, they used to sacrifice by serving the master, taking fruit or flower. These days, money is the means of sacrifice. So people should pay anything. I made it for free, hoping that more people can attend. Matter of fact, they stop coming. So this is why I say people should sacrifice. They pay just whatever they can pay. They have to sacrifice time, money, that makes them humble, 
makes them receptive, lets them dissolve, dissolve their ego, then they would learn. Like people who pay some like $2,000 for some meditation course, they get only some instruction and that is it. And it seems to work because they pay $2,000, so they practice twice a day. So the result is not from that course, but practicing twice a day. That mm -hmm. is commitment. So this is why I would let people, if they want to arrange the group, they organize the group, I will teach. Otherwise, they can do private session. I can deal with them at their own level and give them all the guidance necessary. If they want, they can get their friends. So this is the whole idea that we should be committed to ourselves. Yeah. Right? Our mind yeah. and emotions come in the way. Mm -hmm. And the reason is we have so many distractions. We have so much bombardment, so much information in the mind. We don't have clarity. Our life is not simple. Not only possessing things, but activities wise, we are busy. All our senses are busy. We are in the past, we are in the future, we are in the imagination. We have hopes, ambitions. This is what prevents it. So this is why I recommend simplest meditation is be empty and quiet. Just be still, observe the breath. I wrote in the three, four path and later books. That is the essence of all the teachings. Very direct teaching. That's what it is. Okay. Can we do a meditation before we yeah. finish?